Okay, so my name is Natalie Breton, um, and I worked alongside Nat Blazer to develop this project, and it is a customizable turbofan engine in OpenVSP. Um, a little background, currently I'm a student at the University of Virginia, and I am planning on majoring in mechanical engineering and probably a double major in aerospace. I started working on this through a high school project and that continued into an internship over the summer and I'm hoping to continue some of my work at college. So a little background information. As you mentioned, we are our goal was to design a parametric dual stream turbofan engine model, which is one of the more common engines seen on many um, different aircrafts and we wanted to be able to import that as a component into OpenVSP. So the problem that we are looking at is that currently OpenVSP does not have an engine component. Um, this makes the process of designing one pretty difficult. While it does have other options like the fuselage, the wings, the stack, all of the different options that you can see in the drop down, um, you don't have like a specific component where you can just import an engine, which makes the process very tedious because if you were to like go through and design an engine, it would probably be through a process of like using a stack and defining all of the different cross sections and their displacements, which can take a while. So given that the specific goal that we the goals that we had were to design a customizable turbofan engine component that could be added to the model with one click, just like the other features. Um, this would have all of the important parameters um, being modifiable so that the user can adjust them in an intuitive and easy way. And because of this, it would also reduce the time that it takes to design an engine. Another goal that we had was we wanted to make it compatible with most CFD solvers so that the process from like design and imagination to um, calculations and CFD was more um, efficient. Um, the importance of this project comes in because currently CFD is often done without engines included. So there will be like a really detailed aircraft design without a super accurate engine outer mold line. So we'll have like a general body of a plane that's super specific and then sometimes there just won't be engines. And so given this, like the accuracy of the CFD calculations can only be as detailed as the geometry itself. So we're doing very good calculations on sometimes incomplete geometry. So this uh, limits the effectiveness of the calculations and it doesn't provide encompassing results um, like they could be if there was a full engine model. So the goal was just to make the process of adding an engine to these models a lot simpler so that it was easier to do. So the design process kind of started with me familiarizing myself with just the basic components of the turbofan engine because coming in as a high schooler, I had no idea how any of this stuff worked. I had never seen open VSP before, never really worked or looked at planes or anything. So I kind of got a general understanding of how the turbofan engine worked. Um, this included like understanding the most important parameters and the basic structures because obviously those are the parts that I was going to have to input into the code later. I also started by modeling it out using a stack like I mentioned before. That was the pretty long tedious process that involved defining each of these cross sections and going through and like saying the displacement and the certain angle angles that like would be connecting the cross sections to one another. Um, and so I made this model right here, which was the first pretty much design that we had of the complete turbofan. And that was just using the stack component. And I want to like prerequisite that when we we're doing this, we're focused on mainly CFD application and not engine cycle. So we don't really have any idea what's going on inside of the engine. We're more focused on like the shaping of it and how it would apply when doing CFD analysis. Um, after I kind of got a like broad idea of how the engine worked itself and how it would be formed, I moved on to looking at advanced linking, which was one of the first things that we thought we might use as an option to design this component. And that just gave me an idea of like how to link different parameters. And so when you're doing advanced linking, you can just go into the tab and you can write different equations. So if you wanted like the inner diameter to be one half times the outer diameter, you could do that. And it just showed me how like 
code in OpenVSP worked and how you could link these different parameters together, which was going to play a role in my project later on. Um, this also allowed me to just familiarize myself with like OpenVSP formatting because once again, I have not had that much experience coding either, so this was all kind of new to me. We decided decided pretty quickly that advanced linking didn't have it wasn't like all encompassing enough for us to to do like the entire engine in because there's so many components and doing it with advanced linking it just wouldn't be like exactly what we wanted it to be. So we moved on to designing a custom VSP part. And so this custom VSP part was actually based on the fuselage component. So the code that I did to write this was actually taken from the current fuselage one, and I just started modifying the different cross sections. So I'm not going to get into like the code, I promise, but the little paragraphs over here, each one of these is the cross section that I defined in the code. And so it basically just goes through. So like this would be the first or zero, one, two. And I defined all of these kind of the same way like I did with the stack, except this time it was moving all of that, um, all of the stuff that I did in open VSP like through the system and putting it behind the scenes using code. So when the user like brings up this model, they wouldn't have to go through any of the code or defining the individual cross sections because they would already be like predefined behind the scenes. Um, most of you guys are probably familiar with the VSP part concept, but if you're not, it's super easy. You can just write the code in like notepad or another editor and then you save them into the custom scripts folder of open vsp and then it's called when the program is opened so you can import any of the things that you use. so the one that i made was called scarf because i had just add scarfing to the engine and so you can just click on it when you open the program after figuring out that we were probably going to be focused on designing a custom vsp part I had to look at the different design options and so two of the main ones that we're looking at and that we're still kind of going back and forth about with are absolute value and ratios. So we could either use an absolute value, which would be like using an, an exact number to define the different parameters, or we could use a ratio, which would scale them like in accordance to one another. So what I mean by this is like if we have little d to define like the highlight diameter and big d to define the fan face we could either say little d equals 1.1 time or big d equals 1.1 times little d or we could just call it 110 inches and so there's a lot that went in when kind of debating which one to do because for different features like different um techniques are better so for like the ratio one and i'll talk about this a little bit later um the maximum diameter of the nacelle you can actually adjust its position on a scale of zero to one, zero being like the front of the nacelle, the highlight, and one being the end of the nacelle. And that's like, the ratio would work better for something like that. Um, absolute value does give you a little bit more freedom. So the user has um, more ability to do whatever they want, but on the downside, the user also has the ability to do pretty much whatever they want. So it's easier to break the model. So moving on into the layout, um, the engine is divided into three main tabs in the code. And so there are the engine tab, the nacelle tab, and the strengths tab. And the engine tab focuses mainly on the inner portion of it. So like the exhaust and like the part, the portion of the engine that would be like the inner part, even though we don't get into like how it works or anything, that's um, all of those components are under that tab. And then the nacelle focuses on the shell of it, the nacelle of the thing, the inlet, um, and the shaping of that. And then the strengths is where everything gets a little bit more specific, and the user has the ability to adjust like the right and left side strengths on the inlet and the like trailing edges, and that kind of gets more into the curvature of things, I guess, like the really specific design of it. And I'm going to go into all of this more. So I'm kind of going to start at the like the front of the engine and work my way back. But the first feature that the user can modify is the spinner and you can change the length and diameter. I have these little videos in place. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about and follow along. So the user can change the length of the spinner, the diameter, and then over here, this would be in the strengths tab that I was talking about. And it basically adjusts um, how far out the cross section goes before it like turns. So it adjusts like the curvature of that. Uh, 
Um, next we have the fan diameter, and this is a rather important component, and it would probably be a feature where the user would use the ability to type in a value to their advantage. So if they had already calculated like specific a specific bypass ratio that they wanted, or um, they already had an idea of like how big the fan diameter needed to be for a specific bottle, they could easily type that in, and that would be helpful. Um, or they could just use the slider if it's more visual, but you can adjust the fan diameter there. Um, moving into the engine structure, the main things that we have here are the engine length and the turbine diameter. And so the engine length gives the user the ability to adjust the distance from the fan face to the end of the engine, and they can change that. The turbine diameter is just the diameter of this part back here, and the thing that's interesting about this is it gets kind of complicated at the back of the engine because this is one of the more like calculation heavy areas of the engine. And so the code that went into it, this is a little bit more complicated. That's why when you see this turbine um, changing sizes, you can also see the back of the engine changing with it. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide, I think. So yes, the back of the engine, as I was saying, um, this part of the model took a lot of concentration. And that's because the different parameters move in conjunction with it, with each other to keep the areas constant. So the cool thing about this model and the way we designed it is that the user can identify a specific area that they want for like the exhaust face of the fan or the choke of the fan so that they could like reach a certain Mach number or so that their aerodynamics would be working the way the way that they wanted them to be working. And so the reason like the fact that they can add the area and keep it constant means that if they wanted to go back and adjust something later, like change the length of the engine or um, something along those lines, they wouldn't have to worry about like redoing calculations and going back and adjusting the area as it's a parameter that will move with the engine. So the code was a, the code for this was a little interesting to write, but it made it so that they can set that area, the user can set the area and then not have to worry about it changing if they move something else. So that's nice. Um, so here we can see the fan and core exhausts work. So I believe this is the core one, yeah. So you can change the uh, face area of the core and then the choke area, which is here, and then the nozzle length. So how, how far back the um, choke would be from the core exhaust. And the same thing goes for the fan. So you can change the fan face area and then the fan choke area over here and then the length of the nozzle. Okay, so now moving into inlet design and strengths. And this is actually one of the things that we are still kind of working on. Um, because a lot goes into inlet design. And so currently the model has um, features for changing the length of the inlet, which would just adjust like how far out from the fan face it extended, the diameter, which changes this highlight diameter, and something that we more recently added was the ability to scarf the engine. So the user can adjust that angle using a slider also. Um, when we get into strengths, it's more specific. It's the inner strength and the outer strength of the inlet, and then the strength on this inner corner right here, which would be the inner strength of it. Um, this is the thing we're, that we're kind of still working on because when people go to design inlets, they probably don't really look at strengths, like, oh, the strength of this right side would be whatever number this is. So it's not as intuitive to like, look at VSP and be like, oh, I would need the strength to be this number. So we actually have some techniques that we're working on um, that might help that out. Um, moving on to the body of the engine, this is just like the basic structure of it. So we have things like max diameter, which is pretty self-explanatory, and max diameter position, which is the ratio from zero to one that I was talking about, that allows the user to adjust the position of the diameter along the nacelle. We also have nacelle length, which would um, change the length of the nacelle, like how far it extends. And then we have the strengths for the maximum diameter that would be under the strength tab, and that allows the user to adjust the, the curvature of the nacelle, I would guess. And that's just, you can kind of see it 
it's a lot more specific. <laughs> Okay, and I think this is the last slide on the features. And so we have the trailing edge strengths, which allows the user to change like the curvature and the trailing edge angles of the backside of the engine. So at the top, they can adjust the angle of that nacelle, and then they can adjust the angle of the core um, nozzle right here, and then the angle of the turbine plug. So that would kind of adjust like how far out it goes based on that angle. So some of the special features and the thing that I think this makes this engine like very useful is OpenVSP has this very cool function that allows you to draft over an image and like import the image as a background. And that makes it very useful when it comes to working with this model because you can easily import a picture of some kind of engine that you would want to model for a plane and then turn on the wireframe for the engine and draft it right on top of the picture. So I think I did this one in about two minutes just using all of the features that are available in the customizable turbofan engine component and it was super quick and you can see it gave a pretty accurate model of the engine pictured here. So this really allows people to like quickly design an engine that would be far more accurate than um, than just like creating a cylinder or a hollow tube in place of it. So this allows a lot more accuracy in a short period of time. Um, we can also use subsurfaces when it comes to open VSP, so that's very helpful. And so moving on to subsurfaces, they allow for quick meshing when it comes to VSP and to define the important regions. So this is what will allow for like power boundary conditions and the user to specify like flow in the different conditions for like flow in and flow out. And this makes it more specific than if you were just to use a hollow cylinder or something because you can actually define the conditions around the engine itself. Um, this is how we put it into the code. I'm not going to get into it, but it involved like using indexing and defining the different subsurfaces. So normally you can de define subsurfaces like using a feature in OpenVSP on its own, but here we did it behind the scenes so that they were already like they're already pre existing and there. OK, so moving into CFD analysis, this is actually something that I didn't have as much time to focus on as I would have liked. Um, when I was doing my internship, it took a while to get the software, and so I wasn't quite able to have the time to test all of it out. But theoretically, the engine is designed to work with CFD intuitively because of the SERP surfaces, and I can confirm that it can be exported to different meshers with a very quick process, because when I was debugging this, I probably exported it about 50 times, and it is a very quick process, so that works very well. And so we're still working on the CFD. Um, future work, we are always looking for user feedback. So we want, I want people to come break the model so I know what doesn't work correctly. Um, I'm always looking for input because I don't necessarily know everything when it comes to like what people are looking for when they would build a model or when they would use an engine. So it's always good to like know what features would be useful and like what probably wouldn't work correctly. Also, I'm looking into more of the ratio control. So possibly instead of saying like the highlight diameter can be anything, saying that the highlight diameter can't be any bigger than the um, fan face diameter, because I mean, technically that shouldn't happen. And that would help constrain it so that the model's less likely to break and there's um, not as big of a probability of messing something up. Also, um, easier inlet shaping. And so I talked to a couple people and uh, about like how what people look at when they go to des design inlets and so what we have up here is we're moving into looking at using a NACA one cowl to define like the top portion of the inlet from highlight to maximum diameter and then using um, elliptical profiles for the bottom half. So this blue portion would be defined by the elliptical profile and this outer portion would be defined by the NACA one. And what you can do here is like for the ellipse, you could, I think this one's a four to one ratio. Normally I 
believe it's a two to one, but you can adjust that and make it so that the strengths of the inlet follow the ellipse. And that just makes it a like more accurate design for the inlet, which is one of the more important parts of an engine. Um, also, we are aiming to possibly publicly release this to OpenBSP. So maybe when, one day when you open the program, you will have an engine component that you can import onto your plane. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to give a big thank you to, um, first of all, thank you for letting me present today. It was really nice. Um, also, my internship was funded by AATT, and a huge thank you to Nat Blazer, my mentor, and all the people that helped me, Cody Perkins and Irian Ordaz, really helped me try and figure out CFD. Um, just thank you to everyone for this opportunity. So if you guys have any questions, if we have time, I will try and answer them. Well, I'll jump in. Uh, congratulations, you did a you did a great job. I'm really impressed all the way through. Uh, my first question, admittedly, will be a little bit loaded, but uh, how hard was this in in your estimation of how hard was it? How hard was doing this complicated uh, user defined geometry? Um, that is a loaded question. I would say most of the the most difficult part probably lied in figuring out what the useful parts of a program like this would be. So if you had a customizable engine component, what would you want to move? Like, what would you want to stay constant? What features would you need to, like, be able to modify? Kind of figuring that out and understanding what people would look for in a model like this made it most difficult. Um, yeah, that was probably a lot harder than just learning the code itself because that was a lot of trial and error and like plugging values in and seeing what happened. But figuring out the actual goal and like what we wanted from the engine itself was probably the most difficult part. Well, that's that's really a fabulous answer. Um, I think that's actually an extremely insightful answer. I find that when I'm developing things in VSP, that yes, getting thinking about what the user wants and how do you make something intuitive is often where most of the time goes and, and actually implementing it isn't that complicated. But yeah. I'll also I'll also congratulate you on um aside from you know take outside of the uh custom components that I know of that have been developed by the core development team, um yours is far and away the most sophisticated custom component I've seen developed. So any of the other users out there who you know, people have made excuses that they uh, that they don't think they want to or can make a custom component. It's a really powerful feature that um, you can make VSP really suit your domain and your application very efficiently by developing one of these. So I encourage people to try it. And uh, this is a great example. Yes, absolutely. It on that note, like it was not that hard to figure out how to write the code for custom components. So if anyone is interested in trying to make one, I highly recommend that you do. That part wasn't that um, difficult, especially if you already have an idea of like what you would be using the custom component for. So if you already have like the design requirements that you would want for it, it's, it's a very doable process and it's a really helpful and beneficial component to have. Yeah, and I'll I'll second Rob's comments that coming at this, <clears throat> excuse me, as a as an, a user with almost zero experience, if not zero experience, and then picking up everything that you did, um, is exceptionally impressive. And uh, I'll congratulate you as well. That the work has been outstanding. Thank you so much. I don't see any. Um... Oh, well, there is there is there is a couple of questions here. Um, one is is congratulatory on the YouTube stream. You can you can catch that. And then someone asked if you have con connected it to a known model and uh, measured and calculated its contribution to drag. So I know you said you were working towards doing the CFD analysis and and uh, that was delayed, but has I also know that your that your your mentor had done some some preliminary work similar to this um, that was presented last year. So do you have any any evidence of, of using this in an analysis or is that just not quite there yet? Um, that is sadly not quite there yet. I was working on getting CART 3D to work at the end of my internship and I had to go through a lot of software 
treatment usage stuff before I was able to get it up and running. And by the time I was able to get CART 3 down DD get CART 3D downloaded, my internship was pretty much over. Um, I did get to the chance to like export it into there somewhere. So sometimes, so I know that that process is possible. It's just the process of getting it to work correctly that we're still working on. But theoretically, with a little bit more work, I think I could easily figure out how to um, get it working properly. I just don't have access to the CFD software right now. Well, thanks a lot for coming and uh, giving us this update on all your work. And, you know, last thing I'd say, go ahead and take the plunge, ditch that ME stuff and just go arrow. <laughs> OK, I mean, I'm thinking about it. I really am. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for having me and letting me present.